Hello, National University Academy Extended Learning students. My name is David Goyette. Um, I'm coming to you to review the um, California Subject Examinations for Teachers, a CSET um, for Social Science, the World History portion. I'm just going to review with you uh, what you will expect to see, or what you can expect to see, excuse me, on the um, CSET diagnostic test. Um, now, I do want to go over some of these topics because I don't want you to feel as though you've never been um, exposed to some of the material. Uh, the content, a lot of the content is there on the website. There's just so much to cover and some of the questions I've selected or uh, some of the questions that I've written uh, were um, inspired by everything from the, the Kaplan texts on the subject, the, um, the exam book and other resources out there on the market. Also the most the mo thing I turned to most was of course the release questions on the website. There are only so many of those and I wanted to give you a broader look at some of the test questions. So let's look at some of the things you'll see on the exam. Um, there's going to ask you a question on fluvial civilizations and we know that um, fluvial has to do with the sediment erosion from river from river basins and the question reads something like this. Both um, Egypt and Mesopotamia were known as fluvial civilizations because they arose in river valleys. Of course, your other um, selections there, you'll have to weed through and read all the selections. Of, but remember that fluvial has to do with river valleys because of the erosion and sediment that happens around those creates a fertile soil. That's why Egypt and Mesopotamia, uh, Yellow River and China were all areas where civil civilizations could uh, grow crops and prosper. Which of the following best describes the main function of mon monumental architecture in early Mesopotamia and ancient coastal Peru? You'll remember in both these civilizations that people wanted to have these majestic, majestic looking temples where you could wa um, walk up high, at least the, um, you, the, uh, the priest would walk up on this step pyramid, the adherents, the people that were there to worship, would walk up to the top and of course be on high to be closer to God. Now. The majesty of these monuments, the step pyramids or ziggurats, as they're referred to in Mesopotamia, were to provide a site for the performance of religious rituals. That's what you're supposed to recall from that. And the question is comparing Mesopotamia to Peru. It's a question that is from the CSET release questions. The term fertile crescent was first applied by the historian and Egyptologist, Egyptologist James Breasted when, he, when referring to the Near East that extended from the Persian Gulf to the Sinai Peninsula. Now you remember that the geography that they're looking at here is Mesopotamia, Syria, and Palestine. The study of human origins has been a major contribution of, and it'll give you five or six, or excuse me, four or five um, options. The Leakies are the, are the name you'll be looking for, uh, and do your research on the Leakies. They're important to the um, study of human origins. Radiocarbon dating would be most beneficial for the field of archaeology, not geography per se. Uh, anthropology, sociology, or nephology, the study of clouds, but archaeology. Geography was first studied in an organized manner by the Greeks. The early ancient civilizations developed systems of government to regulate and direct the economic activities of the people as they worked in groups. Now that would seem like an obvious answer. But people get it wrong, so that's why I'm going over it. Let me read it again. The early ancient civilizations developed systems of government to regulate and direct the economic activities of the people as they worked in groups. Uh, one of the many contributing factors leading to the fall of the Roman Empire, the most significant problems were the empire becoming too large, academics, the division of the empire by Diocletian, and, and it gives you some other... Some, a list of other um, options here, the, the, and the four are invasions by Mongols, financial mismanagement, um, internal oppositions, and slaves, slaves revolting in large numbers. Um, now if you look at um, the internal opposition at the time in Rome, at, during the fall of Rome, you will see that the power struggle, there were actually 26 different um, uh, political bands and or um, um, the warlords, if you want to call them for lack of a better term, personalities, <laughs> people running for office uh, as viciously as they could, 26 different people that claimed the throne at the time of Rome's falling. So you can see it was a very fractured country. Uh, and generals struggled for power and died violently. 
Um, one of the things, if you sit down and read Gibson's um, account of the fall, the last days of the Roman Empire, you'll see that there was just there were so many egos involved, and there were so many people that um, were uh, you know being killed right on the steps of the Capitol and in just the most vicious manner with their head on a pike, and then the next day that happened to the next guy that was in line. It was a very brutal time. The exercise of power and political behavior in society today would be practiced by experts in the field of political science. Which of the following did not contribute to the early medieval European civilization? The spread of ideas through trade and commerce. That's going to happen later on with the during the Crusades and the wars with the Moors. The, the soldiers will actually be introduced to the fabrics the spices, the food, the culture, and that's going to stimulate more of the trade. But during the medieval period itself, um, the trade and, and um, the openness of those regions was, was really not there. They were really closed down periods. That's why they call it the Dark Ages. There was this lack of knowledge, this darkness out there with the rest of the world, in part, of course. Um, the world religion that includes a caste system is, and of course, um, Buddhism is the reaction against this caste system, in part. Scientology, well, Tom Cruise, really not involved in a caste system. Hinduism and Sikhism. Now, Hinduism is your best answer there, because Hinduism is known for its caste system in India. The untouchables, etc. Um, during the scientific revolution, a new approach to acquiring knowledge based on reason, using observations and experimentation that culminated in the scientific method, stating the problem, gathering data, forming a hypothesis, experimenting, and drawing a conclusion, the philosopher or scientist and author of Meditations who emphasized this approach in search of truth was, now this has come up where this was questioned. Some actually go with Bacon on this. Rene Descartes comes up again and again, and the your exam book sides with that, the scientists and historians who agree that Rene Descartes was the scientist who focused on the importance of reason as an ex essential role in the quest for truth. Now I'm going to pause this this one because I don't want to make these videos too long so they're difficult to upload and use on the internet. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to come back to you with more information about what to expect on the world history portion of the diagnostic test for the CSET National University um, uh, Social Science exam. Talk to you soon.